um, a few years ago, I realized that as an adult, I have choices. And if I don't like something, I can remove myself from the situation. You see, as a new kid in New York City, if you don't have that belief firmly in place, you're going to run into a little trouble. So at the time, I had this, like, I had this delusion that I had to suck things up and push things through, and I had no choice. And then I would express my dissatisfaction with passive-aggressive behavior. And I'm sure no one here understands or can identify with passive-aggressive behavior. Never. No, no, never. So in this story, I found myself a type A, get it done, self-help junkie, trapped in a room with the most lazy, apathetic, slovenly student in New York City. Now, I probably shouldn't be too hard on him because the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and his family's branches were full of shit. <laughs> quite literally. You walked into this family's house in Side Town and there were like stacks of old beaters, digest, toys, food, sometimes food waste strewn all over the floor. The doorbell rang at least once an hour with um, a food delivery person with mozzarella sticks, French toast, pizza, which were all snacks before dinner. The TV was always on blaring. The mom, who actually had a PhD but seemed to do nothing but sit home and enable her child's inadequacies, was always in the living room, like rocking back and forth on the square chair, saying, oh, everything's so bad, the teacher's so bad, the students so bad, everything's so bad, the kids can't learn because it's so bad. The dad, who was an obese bond trader, would deal with his children's poor academic performance by compulsively buying books on Amazon, which the kids use later to build forts. The kids, let's call them Mo, Larry, and Curly, were just like entitled little princes. I kind of like Larry because he was cynical and hated his family, but. So I was trapped for two hours at a clip with the eldest, Mo, Bart Simpson in the flesh. <laughs> now his mother's unending affection and his dad's spoiling led him to believe that he was at once a king and a, heart, a rock star heartthrob. He would walk into the session with a cut off shirt and stride in, strutting his stuff and without wearing deodorant. He was a teenage boy, it was disgusting. Um, he was always complaining that he didn't have time between school and tutoring, which is really strange because school was another place, according to his teachers, where he sat around, picked his nose, and did nothing. He was super resistant to any sort of improvement. I mean, this kid didn't know how to divide fractions, and so I, and he was in eighth grade. So I taught him, gave him a worksheet, and then he complained, turned around and complained to his parents that he wasn't going to do it because it really was just too much work. Just this kid, a greater waste of space, was never created. And I should have quit. I mean, hello, it was New York City. There were plenty of other parents who were willing to pay for overpriced tutoring. But I was under the delusion that I had to suck it up and push it through. And at the night, simmering disgust just like turned into this black hatred. And my passive aggressive tendencies were kicking in super hard. I did the old, you know, the old sneeze thing where it was like he would do something obnoxious and I'd be like, oh, <laughs> kids like, you kind of tie my tubes. <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> I would find any and every excuse to avoid this kid, any contact with him. So I'm sitting in the room, I'd be like, oh, why don't we do an independent problem set? And then I would treat into my phone to get where I was. And then he would ask a question, oh, why don't you try it? And then you see what you know and what you don't know. Oh look, we're out of time. He became an increasingly inept tutor. And the phrase, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything, really started to haunt me on type A. So a recipient session one day, and Mo brings in three packs of beef jerky. Opens each one, rips off one bite at a time, stuffing it in his face, and chewing with his mouth open. I'm sitting there just giving him a death stare. And, and I start to ask myself, am I truly a bad person? Is this teaching me that I am like a spiteful, hateful, apathetic person? I mean, maybe this is like I'm discovering my true character here. Mo starts to look a little queasy and proceeds to projectile vomit all over me. Now, when I walked out of that house forever, I knew the answer now. It was me, and it wasn't me. I mean, I'm not a spiteful, hateful, apathetic person but I am sometimes afraid to say no and to make choices. 
So there is nothing like projectile vomit to teach you that if you don't like a situation, you better get out before the shit gets all over you. Thank you.